so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. So by your grace and mercy, as we receive the body of our brother Carlisle into this place of worship, before your, your sanctuary, continue to receive him into your eternal kingdom. By your Holy Spirit, come and continue, Lord, to envelop your family, parents, siblings, this congregation, and those online, the wider community, with your comforting arms of assurance. Whether we live and whether we die, we are the Lord's. Receive our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Will you please stand as we listen to the background music? resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. servant into judgment, O Lord, for no one living is righteous before you. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. a candle now um, around the picture of Carlisle um, to celebrate his earthly life short though it may be whatever Yodi asks to do so please come on yes. As we celebrate our brother's life, which stands as a light in our midst, a light snuffed out too early, we pray, Heavenly Father, 
in your son Jesus Christ you have given us it through faith and assurance help us now to live as those who with Carlisle believe in the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection to eternal life come now Lord and strengthen this faith and hope in us all the days of our lives. Through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. On behalf of the congregation of St. George's Anglican Church, we welcome you. Although we know that the circumstances is very um, sad, but as a congregation, we give thanks that even though his death was untimely, that we have as a community the responsibility to hold him up to God who offers eternal rest because God is the one who comes to save us. that this parish has had the, the privilege of being able to baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, confirm him, serve his life as a servant of God. And now before other major events in his life, we are called to commend him back to God for eternal rest. Be assured of our ongoing prayers for you, the family, all who mourn Carlisle's death. So condolences on behalf of this family, of this congregation, and thank you also for ensuring that we keep the COVID protocols, because we're living with a deadly, more deadly form of the COVID virus. I plead with you to look after yourselves in order to look after others. Now in a moment of silence, let us make our personal thanksgiving to God for all that Carlisle has made. So we invite the person to, who is to light the second candle as we celebrate Carlisle as being a member of his earthly family, a member of the community, and a member of the wider family. I must profess to you that coming to work in the Northern Suburbs has been a challenge because the names that you give one another are such grand names that we can't always pronounce them. And I had a one-on-one -on -one with Iodia, who is a professional at giving names to all kinds of people. So though I was told her name twice, I'm still not sure what her name is. It was coming to do with the liturgical gospel. Delisha. So long as it's not Delilah. <laughs> and I
And as the leisha comes up to do this liturgical come up, my dear, after the dance, um, Shimon, is the guy there? Shimon Marsko will come and do the uh, tributes. And when Shimon is concluded, then we'll have a slideshow. After the slideshow, Leo will come and do a poem. And then Enos will come and do the thanks. After each speaker, the lectern will, and mic will be uh, sanitized so that we practice safe breathing. Um, so please wait before we do the next.
Shimon. I am Clara's eldest cousin from his mom's side. And Tali and I grew up in a house together. Um, I was about eight years old when he was born. And I remember, I remember when um, Nilesem came home with this beautiful baby. It was such a beautiful baby. He had this pitch black hair, the most beautiful baby that I've seen. And Kari was born on the 11th of September in 1996. Um, he then grew up and we, he went to Frohlak and Funky's crash, like many of us did. And he then went on to, uh, I think, Sarepta Primary School and then um, Sarepta High School later on. He then went on um, for a while. He um, worked at Pick and Pay in the butchery with his daddy, one of his first jobs. And then um, later on, he went on to work for WCB Construction. Um, he was a Wi Fi installer. Um, and up until recently, he was working at Bridgetown High as a caretaker. Um, as Father mentioned earlier, Aunt Kelly grew up in this church, in this community. He um, was baptized in this church and he was confirmed in this church. And So over the last couple of days, I've been engaging with the family and um, because I didn't want to stand here on my own accord, I wanted to speak on behalf of, of, of our family. Um, and if there's characteristics of Kali that just came through consistently from when he was a little boy, he made friends very easily. And I think that's quite evident in the number of young people that has been there over the last couple of days. Um, Kala love name brands. He loved name brands. You would not see me the house without a name brand on. I remember when I first started working and then I, I, took, I took him with me to the mall once and I said he can get him something but I went into, I think it was Mr. Price. <laughs> and he told me, now I'm telling the fuck for you, but you will hear and whatever. And he looked at me like that and he's like, when he cook. And he told me he is fine over the game. And that was Carla. He loved name brands. And I think after a while we learned to appreciate that about him. The fact that he, when he left the house, they was a number lickers, but cook the twin. Um, he was very humorous. He was a very humorous person, always a joke. And that also, also came through consistently with the people that we've engaged with, not just in our house, in our family, but outside as well. One of the, the uh, funny things that was mentioned over this last week, um, I was sitting with the Ines team and then she told me, Carla let mayonnaise of alles sit. The mayonnaise never lasted. When she wanted to make a salad, she must tell him the day before Kali, the mayonnaise is very slime, and this slime, when the mayonnaise eat it, and then mayonnaise of alles sit. Um, Carla was a protector, and he was particularly protective of his siblings. And he was particularly protective of you, Anina. And then, Kali loved the ladies. And the ladies loved Kali. And for the next thing, I'm asking you to my Nana. Um, my Nana was telling me that one of the most beautiful characteristics about Kali was that when he ever he saw her, um, he would look at her. And he would stay at her, and that look that he gave her made her feel like she was the only person in the room. And in that way, he made her feel very special. So, and, and as I sat and I thought about it myself, and I'm like, I can relate to that, because I've seen that look before, and I think many of us have seen that look before. And when, when, when I, I made a note of the fact that Kali was, you know, that he loved the ladies, and that he was fond of the ladies, and the ladies was fond of him, I realized, ding, 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 that look. It was that look. Um, so, something also that was very important or, or a beautiful characteristic about Kala. Kali was always respectful. 
I cannot tell you of a day or an instance where he was rude or funny or anything like with me. There's lots of times that I went to him and scalling me dumb or whatever the case might be. He would never answer me. The most I would get out of him was nine man mona, and that was it. He was a respectful boy, and we loved him for that, and he will always be cherished for that. I don't know, this last week, um, on two occasions, um, the story of Paul and Silas um, came to me in scripture, and I saw it on Facebook. And it was when Silas and Paul were in jail, and they praised God while they were in jail. And the, and the gates of the prison, the doors of the prison flung open. My wish and my prayer this morning is that during this difficult time that my family will continue to praise God and to stay at his feet. When we praise him, we open the floodgates of heaven. When we praise him, we change the atmosphere. When we praise him, we're telling our fears that he's bigger than, that are we, we're going to have faith despite our fears, and that he's bigger than whatever challenge we are facing. And this week particularly, when I heard the news on Sunday, I just sat quietly in front of God, and I just told him, Lord, I don't even know what to ask for, but just show up. Just show up. And this week, God showed up. He showed up. And so I just want to encourage my family and everyone that loved him to stay at God's feet. Kali was a beautiful person, and this morning I don't have a doubt of where my cousin's soul is. I have no doubt where his soul is. He will be loved, and he will be missed. But we need to draw strength, and his death is a call to action for us. We need to do better. We need to be better. So thank you for this opportunity to have been able to say something. And Kali, <laughs> when us live for you, And I will carry you in my spirit always. And thank you. Morning, everybody. You never said you never said I'm leaving. You never said goodbye. You were gone before I knew it. Only God knew why. A million times I needed you. A million times I cried. If only love alone could have saved you, you would never die. In life I love you. In death I still love you. In my heart you are all the place that, that no one could ever fall. If it broke my heart to lose you. But you didn't go alone. A part of me went with you the day God took you home. Good morning, everybody. Um, the family, on behalf of the family, they asked me to just do the vote of thanks for them. It was actually a vote of thanks that I know them wrote, so I'm just going to read it as is. It is with great sadness that I stand in front of you today. I never would have thought that this day would happen in our lives. Preparing this acknowledgement has been difficult, but also very rewarding. It allowed us to reflect on all the time that we spent with Kelly and how wonderful a person he was. 
His passing also showed us the qualities of the young man that we have raised, loving, caring, joking, and very respectful. But just seeing the presence of people today made us realize how blessed we are as a family to have all the support from fams, family and friends. Whether it was just a handshake, a telephone call, a simple message, please know that we as a family appreciate it. There's a few people that we would like to thank in particular, the paramedics that assisted us on the day of Kali's accident, the hospital staff and doctors at Miki Kelshriver, forensic services at Tigerwerk, the undertakers for assisting us with all the arrangement, the clergy, clergy Father Rodney Alvin, thank you very much. Um, family and friends, your support have helped us in so many ways. Knowing that we are in your prayers um, helped us a lot through this time. And then from Ines and Quentin, Yaudi, Lenti, Paul, thank you very much for you guys being there for them, for just being there to do whatever. Shaman and Rinwa, a special thanks to you guys. Your help, it, it meant such a lot to the family. And last but not least, we want you guys to never stop praying for the family. It helps a lot to know that we are in your prayers. And thank you for just showing up today to celebrate Kali's life. And I want us to remember him of the person that we all said that he was. Thank you very much. A reading from First Thessalonians, we start reading from verse from chapter four, verse thirteen to eighteen. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do, who do not have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by your word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then 
we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hear the word of the Lord. We will now listen to a musical clip from Common Praise, Amazing Grace. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. May I now share with you from Holy Scripture in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for the tributes that were given to a man who lived a quarter of his life if he were to live to a hundred. And although we may say it's a life that was snuffed out too early from the tributes that we got from dance to thanks and poetry, we were refreshed by the life that Carlyle lived. In my own summary, I heard a people's person. We need people like that to improve society and relationships. I'm not so sure about the next one, but name brand. And I often refer to us who are baptized. Even just being created in the image of God is the best name brand you can ever have. Humorous. Even though he looks very serious on the photo, though, he displayed this needed gift because life can be so serious and we can take ourselves so seriously that he could see beyond the seriousness the need to bring humor to help people deal even with the discomfort. 
as the elder son and brother, he was protective. He looked out for others, particularly those near to him. I like this one. He was a lover boy. Now I looked around to see which of these girls he attracted are here today um, because he had a look, according to Shimon, that caught the eye. And he was a person full of respect. These are some of the characteristics that this young man of 25 years old displayed, talked about um, in honor of him. Aren't these the kind of people we need in this world to make it a better place? And yet they are the ones that we keep losing tragically. However, we cannot bring him back, but we can certainly honor his life and his memory. Not just by speaking about it, but having been challenged by it, how do we also become, display, enact some of these beautiful traits? in the person whom we now lay to rest and commend to God. It was absolutely powerful in the display of the dance to hear these words, a testimony that all of us should have. I am saved, wrapped in the arms of God. God whose kingdom comes, I'm wrapped in the arms of love. The person who sang and Alicia who danced it gives this as a personal, earthly experience and testimony how she seeks to understand her life. Saved by grace, On the bosom of God, whose kingdom reigns, sured of love. Isn't that how all of us should see our lives? Yet, St. Paul begins his letter, the first of the New Testament documents, and says in this fourth chapter, to the congregation then as he speaks to us now. But we do not want you to be uninformed about those who are asleep so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. I think that a lot of us if not all of us display moments of being uninformed. The more I listen to the world through the media, the more I am convinced that people choose to live their lives not by truth, but by lies. The truth is we are saved but we don't live as those who are saved. The truth is that God envelops us in his arms of love, but we choose to be distant from God, and we choose to deny love. It is true that God's kingdom reigns, but we establish kingdoms in opposition to God. And so we live by the lie. No wonder we live by the gun and the sword. And Paul says, 
I don't want to leave you uninformed. The way in which Shimon expressed this hope that those who have fallen asleep do not grieve without hope was certainly caught up in the words that she said at the end. Reflecting on the Paul and Silas jail narrative, in their praising, the jail doors swung open. And this was her translation of that. God showed up. God showed up. I want to relate a story to you that connects with that. And I've just been impressed by having touched base with it in a little book that I've got on my shelf for a very, very long time where a young man had asked his rabbi, when will the Messiah come? When will the Messiah come? Will God show up, in other words? And the rabbi said to him, go and ask him yourself. And the young man asked, where is he? Sitting at the gates of the city. How shall I know him? The young man asked. And his rabbi replied, He is sitting among the poor, covered with wounds. The others unbind all their wounds at the same time, and then bind them up again. But he unbinds one at a time and binds it up again, saying to himself, perhaps I shall be ready. I shall be needed. If so, I must always be ready so as not to delay for a moment. And we could certainly ask, having experienced the heart sore of Carlyle's untimely death, that innermost experience of a broken heart, broken emotions, and that his death firmly now established in our memories and will for a time still bring enormous amount of pain. When... Will the Messiah come? In other words, when will we be saved? And Simone tells us God showed up in a moment when we thought he was not there. Delicia says, God is here wrapping me in his arms of love. The rabbis say, he is the wounded one sitting amongst the poor who are looking at their own wounds. How then are we to encourage one another but with these words? For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep for this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, the sound of the trumpet, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those alive who are left will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the end. And so we will always be with the Lord. God showed up. In all the critical moments of our lives, including the moments of severe loss, because he sits amongst the poor of heart, the broken of spirit, 
the grieving and the mourning, the suppression of our anger about this situation, the reality that our world is uninformed because it seeks to live by a lie and not the truth. And we will always be with the Lord because the Lord came to be with us. Where is he? He is at the gate. He is sitting amongst the poor, the bereaved, the young people who lose their lives in this world, the wounded souls and memories of family members who see them die, untimely deaths, the wounds of communities who see young men brazen about taking another's life because we live by the lie. As we seek to speak these words of encouragement, we cannot speak words that we ourselves have not allowed to penetrate, penetrate our own souls in order for that to become a belief. Do we celebrate our salvation in Jesus Christ? Do we respond to receive God's love for us? Demonstrated in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do we accept that Jesus embodied our humanity in all its brokenness? To be with us, Emmanuel God. God with us. So that we can always be with the Lord. As we look beyond this event as we look through this event and begin to ask the questions, where is God? We have learned he has saved us. He's wrapped his arms of love around us. He shows up in the most critical situations as we worship him. He's at the gate with the poor and the wounded wrapping up his wounds so that he can be ready to wrap up our wounds. There is hope beyond this. The challenge then to us is, as we are wounded by Carlisle's death, as we are wounded by the violence in our communities, because it's the, the violence in the heart and the minds of people, because we live with a lie. Our behavior reveals how uninformed we are about life and its essence. Amongst us sits the Savior who himself was wounded for you and for me. Who did not hide his wounds when Thomas asked in a bout of supposed unbelief, I will not believe unless I see his wounds. He comes to show his wounds so that he can help us with our woundedness. Can this mournful situation be a catalyst? I think Simone says this, that when we praise, we breathe into the atmosphere that which is of God, that which saves, that which is life-giving. Can you and I together, without violence and revenge, but driven by God's love, Praise God with our hearts, our lips, and the service of our lives in the community of faith so that change can happen. So that those who are imprisoned by the lie and live by it can be set free. 
Wilk Carlyle, a protective people's person who loved others respectfully, want us just to be absorbed in his tragic death and in the violence that came with it. And that's the end of the story. No. We should not be imprisoned by this. Because God has shown up. Hallelujah. And he came to save us. Because he loves us. <laughs> Dare I say he loved the perpetrator as well. Can the service be a catalyst for change? Not necessarily with a bang, but in every day. Because this is the challenge of this last verse. As those who are becoming informed by what God has done in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are to encourage one another with these words of hope. It's a personal one-on-one -on -one word of encouragement, testimony, evangelistic outreach without judgment, but to win people with God's love. For that to happen, the message of the gospel must continue to change us from the inside. The presence of the one who himself was wounded is that he sits amongst us and he is within us. As hard as this burden is, let us honor Carlyle's life by making the world a gun-free, anger-free, hate-free, love-filled, forgiving community starting in Serepta with you and with me. Let us be those who are becoming informed so that we can be people of hope. Remember this. In all of this, the rabbi says to us, the one who comes to save us sits with us in our woundedness. God has shown up. God does show up. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray to our Father, our Father in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised Christ his Son from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant Carlyle may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who loved you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn, increase their faith, in your undying love, Lord, in your mercy. May we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in following your Son, and be ready when you shall call us.
to the fullness of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. So your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope and fill them with peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we commend all those who have died to your unfailing love, that in them you will may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with them into your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The commendation, Uncle Colin, a commendation. Let's now commend our dear brother Carlisle to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you gave us life. Your love, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Carlisle to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Amen. We pray for the family. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with those who mourn, that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and grace to use the right the time that is left to us on earth, to repent of our sins, to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, comfort and assure you of his love in this world and the next. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love your neighbor. Go in power to work for reconciliation. Go in hope to proclaim the resurrection. Thanks be to God. We will now do the concluding rite at which we will hear playing in the background the prayer for Andre Bocelli and Salone Dion. That was the original thing they played, but the organist will pray for us the prayer. Can you play the prayer? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to ask that the pallbearers come to the front now. We're going to lead the coffin to the hearse. From there, we're going to Skyview.
Jamaica. 